juggling work deadlines, soccer practice, spilled milk. It's the life of a working mom, right? You constantly fight that feeling of being pulled in a million different directions. Work success, a fulfilling family life. You wonder, can you really have it all? Is work-life balance actually possible? Can you truly be a successful working mom and have a personal life filled with joy and great emotional connection? The answer might surprise you, but stick around because we're going to unlock the secrets of thriving in both worlds. Because mama, you deserve to have it all. Hi friends, I'm Simply Sherry. I empower working moms to flourish by creating a home you love. Secret number one, think work-life integration over balance move beyond the idea of having a perfect balance. You know, it's gonna always be like this. How is life ever perfect? You're not gonna have that balance, but think of more integration. Work and your family life, they integrate. They flow into each other and they flow out of each other and around each other. It's integrated. And so just having that mindset that I'm not here to achieve balance, I'm here to integrate the aspects of my life. It's about creating systems and routines that help you effectively switch gears between work and family. Forget the image of the working mom with all these plates that she's juggling and she's balancing on this board with this you know, ball and trying to keep it all together. It's actually unrealistic, and then it's gonna set you up for failure. So throw that away, and we're gonna talk about integration. This approach recognizes that work and life flow in and out of each other. They're intertwined, and they influence each other, where sometimes one has to take priority. Example, you have a big work deadline that is coming up in two weeks. Well, you prepare for that, and. You know, it's not like your family gets neglected, but you prepare in advance and you have the routines and the systems in place that will only support you in hitting that deadline and at the same time taking care of your family. So you can create a seamless flow between the two of them. And how do you do that? Well, intentional routines, whether it's meal prepping, work tasks, family events, uh, out you know, extracurricular activities, even self-care and relaxation. Routines need to be intentional. That's why they're called routines. And consistency is key, but we'll talk more about this in later videos. You can embrace batching where you focus in blocks of your day, whether it's work tasks, household chores, meal prepping, spending time with the kids, planning for vacations. And if you do it right, you can leverage technology. The simplest thing is having a shared family calendar, but making sure that the technology supports you and not you supporting the technology. But we can talk again about that more later. You can create designated work zones in your whole home. Now this, my whole house is all zoned and stationed. Okay, there's a specific work zone there. Uh, when my kids were younger, there was a homework zone or they had a homework station. There's a place for where you put your landing zone, where you come in from a crazy day, you land, you, you put all your stuff in the right place so that you know where to find the homework, you know where the mail is coming in from, you know where your keys are for the next day. It's a spot for you to land, decompress, and move forward with your evening. And then you you can become the master of saying no. But not only saying no, saying yes. Saying yes to the things that you love and no to the things that you like. And if you just did a bunch of things that you liked, you'll never get to the things that you love. By implementing these strategies, first of all, the thinking that it's integration and not balance, you're going to be able to create those routines and those systems that allow your life to flow in and out 
ebb and flow and that your life flows together. Why? So that you can be present, you can be productive, and you can be happy. Secret number two, embrace good enough. Okay, my life trap was um, that I always felt things were not good enough. And I think naturally, I think I'm organized naturally and definitely I've um, honed some skill sets. But if I look all the way back, there were things that I just liked done a certain way. Like I liked linear, things like linear progression, step one, two, and three. That always resonated with me. But the trap I saw even for myself uh, was that things were not good enough. Like this is not... This is organized, but it's not organized enough. Or this is efficient, but it can be more efficient, right? Like I was always trying to make something better and better and better, which, you know, that works. But if you're doing that constantly, then it will never be good enough. So you have to embrace the idea that it's good enough, right? That your meal is good enough that you cooked for dinner, uh, that your the messiness in your house, you know, it's good enough. The organization in your house is good enough. You start from there, it's, it's going to free you. Then you can be open to the solutions that you really need to implement instead of like, I need to implement everything. And then you just become completely overwhelmed. Or even this idea of like super mom. Okay, we're talking about busy working moms. We're not talking about super moms or we have it all moms. Although I asked, you know, in the beginning, can you really have it all? Well, this is what I'm talking about when we say you can have it all. Having it all doesn't mean you're number one all the time in everything. Like you can sing and dance and cook and throw the best parties and, you know, relax at the same time and have beautiful skin and be completely fit. And then you get a raise every two months. I mean, you can have it all and it's okay. It's good enough what that's going to do for you is it's going to reduce guilt. You know, the mom guilt. You don't have to be super mom. Who's telling you to be super mom? Well, you need to stop listening to that person or those persons or that TV show or that YouTube channel. And then you can focus on progress. Progress over perfection. I mean, isn't that a beautiful phrase? So then you're going to see the things that you did achieve and not the things you didn't achieve. And then it helps you become more present. You know, like you're not, oh my gosh, what did I do? Oh no, what should I do? No, you're here. You know, ground yourself. It grounds you. And let me just emphasize that you can celebrate the small wins because sometimes the small win is a big win, right? When um, your kids, you create a system where they come home, they know exactly where to put their homework and the papers that you need to sign. You know exactly where to put your work bag so that it's prepared for the next day. You know what meal you're having. You know, those small wins add up. The small win in and of itself can be a big win, but imagine those small wins, big win, big win, big win. It becomes one big win and you're going to feel like you are fulfilled because you're celebrating those small wins. So when you embrace the secret, the idea of it's good enough, what happens to you is you relax. You have less guilt, less stress, and then you're just a better person for everyone around you. And who's around you? Your family. Your family benefits from your embracing good enough. Secret number three, prioritize self-care. And we're of course, the self-care where you eat healthy, maybe you take care of your skin, you're exercising, you're getting good sleep. Yes, that's self-care, but also self-care as a working mom where you have a recharge station or a recharge zone, whether you work from home or hybrid or you work in the office, there's an area of your workspace where you recharge. Okay, so for example, it could be... Uh, the, you know, it's built for that, like the snack room, right? If the snack room is filled with people gossiping, maybe that's not your recharge zone. Maybe it's a bench in the lobby or, uh, you know, a chair in the lobby. Maybe it's a bench in the nearby park. 
Maybe it's the water cooler, whatever, because you like to talk. That's how you decompress. That's how you recharge. Maybe if you work from home, there's an actual recharge station where your workspace is separated from the space where you relax. You can have there your favorite books or meditation books or devotional books. Maybe there's a coaster there where you put your cup of tea or whatever drink you like to drink, whether it's in the morning or night. But that area is specific, like, okay, it doesn't have to be a big space, but okay, this is the space where I separate myself from work. I separate my household duties and this is just for me. And regardless of location, again, whether you work from home, hybrid, or outside the home, we have to have boundaries of work. Like you need to turn the sign from open to closed, okay? And this is something that we really worked on even with my marriage with my husband because we have a brick and mortar business. And then I have now a work from home job and I help him with that and then He's always in that brick and mortar business. He has a Pilates studio. And it's like, we can never stop, you know, cause there's a lot of stress. There's a lot of uh, responsibilities and things to do, but it was never shut off. Like, <laughs> you, know, you know, the uh, those um, mom and pop shops where they roll up the, they roll up the metal gate, right? And then they turn the sign to open. And then at night they turn the sign to close they roll down the metal gate and then they, they lock it at the bottom. Okay. We were not doing that. And it was affecting our marriage. It was affecting me at least, uh, you know, which if it affects me, then it affects my marriage and it affects our family. So there has to be a turn off. Right. And even my current job now it's, it's, uh, our customers are international. So I can get calls all times of the day. We don't get a lot of calls because it's a lot of it. A lot of it is by email, but, um, you know, I get emails all times of the day because it's, it's all time zones, but you, you have to turn off. You have to say, it's okay that I don't do work right now because right now I'm prioritizing whatever it is. And that is part of self care. Okay. And then another thing you do is, you know, really respect the breaks. So I personally have a lunch break that I give myself for half an hour. And in that lunch break, because you know, sometimes I would be like on my lunch break, I'm eating while I'm answering emails. And for some of you, maybe that works. Maybe that's what you have to do. But I tell you, it's a lot different taking that half hour, shutting everything off and saying, I am going to enjoy my food, <laughs> especially when you're intermittent fasting, you need to enjoy your food. <laughs> because that's what I'm doing now. And you power off, turn off your phone, unless, I don't know, maybe that's your time to scroll through YouTube or watch your YouTube person or the podcast or watch my channel. Okay, then that's okay. But then, uh, but if that's how you recharge, then that's how you recharge. But for me, that I, I like turning everything off and just enjoying, you know, maybe I'll watch something but just know that that time is for you. What about self-care on the go? Maybe your commute, you commute by train or subway, whatever, um, or even by, if you drive, like maybe you can have breathing exercises before you go into work, before you leave the driveway or while you're on the train. Maybe you have some stretching exercises while you're on the subway. You can listen to calm music or you, maybe you can listen to your favorite music, whatever energizes you, or calms you or reduces stress, you know that and start integrating that into those times when you're commuting. And I can't emphasize enough that at night when you're winding down, uh, to really wind down, you know, to start maybe 45 minutes before it's bedtime to start winding down. But we can talk more about that when we discuss more about evening routines. Secret number four, build a strong support system because we can't do this alone. One of the best ways for, or the best things to look at first, look at a support system within your immediate family. Is that delegating tasks? Um, is that where, you know, you have dinner together every night? Or as the kids get older, then maybe it's not Saturday nights when you have dinner together. You know, for us, we definitely gave chores to our kids when they age appropriate. And my husband had his chores and obviously I had my chores 
and our responsibilities and tasks. And it was something that we, we had sat down together and said, well, what do you want to do? What can you do? Can you do it at this time? Does it work when you do this? So that it was like, um, you know, uh, what do you call that? When you, you, you take ownership, right? And not just, okay, you do the trash and you do the dishes and you put away the, the dishes in the sink. Okay, no, we sat together and yeah, it takes a little bit more time, but it's, it's something that you, we hold ourselves because we said, this is what we're going to do. You know, we made the choice and not us making the choice for that other person. And another great thing to do is, is try to connect with other working moms, because I think it's, it's, it's all different. You know, relationships have different dynamics and different, whether it's a mentor, mentee, or it's a peer relationship or what new friendship, old friendship, whatever, there's different dynamics, but connecting with other working moms, they can relate. We can relate to each other, right? You can relate to each other. Like me, um, when I was a young mom, ah, I loved it. I loved it when I connected with other working moms because we have the same stories. <laughs> we have the same struggles. And then I can see, oh, you're doing that. Oh, how, how did you handle that situation? Hmm, let me see. Maybe I can handle it differently next time. And that's the, the win. That's the win that you, you get to have when you create and build that support system with other working moms. And going back to the age appropriate chores, you know what that does is it really teaches them responsibility. Like you have to be responsible, right? As a parent. Well, when will your kids learn that? Like when they become adults? No, we, we teach them along the way and chores or responsibilities. That's how I looked at chores. Chores are not just chores so that the house can be clean. Chores is a way of teaching responsibility, responsibility, teaching ownership, teaching how to be excellent in what you've been assigned or, um, you know, taking more ownership, being accountable. There's a lot of lessons in just sharing the load within your family. So build your support system, build your squad, don't do it alone. And then secret number five, choose flexibility and adaptability. Choose flexibility and adaptability. So even when you integrate, right, versus balance your work life, you integrate, well, something's bound to happen. There's a hiccup, right? When you hiccup, right? It's like when you hiccup, you can't talk. When you hiccup, you can't drink, although you're supposed to drink in between to let it, you know, try to get it to go away. Um, yeah, it just kind of interrupts you, right? And it's not like a, like a, you know, like you fall over and you can't move at all. No, you can still kind of be moving, but it's very evident that you're hiccuping. And sometimes life throws you those hiccups. Uh, it may not necessarily be a curveball, right? Because those, for me, curveball is a little bit more intense, but hiccup is like, and it usually doesn't last long, hopefully. That's why planning is important, you know, communication, saying yes, saying no. And in those times when there's hiccups, or maybe it's a curveball, you know, you can pivot. One of the best concepts I've learned recently is the 15 degree pivot. So right here, got this. And then here's 90 degrees, 45, half of that is like 2250. So 15, can you see that 15 degree pivot? Okay, so you see here at the end, over here, it's small, like this thing is small here. Okay, that's 15 degrees. But as you go further out here, it gets bigger and bigger. See, right here at this spot, it's small. See that small spot? But as you move here, it's getting bigger. And so the impact of a 15 degree pivot, the impact of a pivot, it becomes more exponential and not linear. And so as you do those pivots, right, you, you're you flexible, you're adaptable, you, or you, you, you um, allow flexibility, you adapt, you do those pivots, you know, life is going to flow more smoothly. You have to be okay that things are not always okay, but you move and you move and you pivot and you make changes, communicate, plan, you'll be fine. And this may be you revisiting your to-do list and changing it around 
or pushing it further back or taking it out altogether. Again, focus on progress, not progression, and celebrate the small wins and the big win. Did you manage to finish a work task despite all the interruptions? Well, that's a win. Did you manage to keep everyone calm or was everyone calm even during one of your kids' meltdown? Then that's a win. So is work-life balance possible? My answer is no, but work-life integration definitely is. Number one, think work-life integration over balance. Number two, embrace good enough. Number three, prioritize your self-care. Number four, build a strong support system. And number five, choose flexibility and adaptability. This channel is your resource as a working mom. We'll dive deeper into future videos of more specific tools and how to's and why's. Subscribe now to join this incredible journey of working moms who are in this together. You have an incredible journey as a working mom. I loved being a working mom. I'm now an empty nester. I'm going to be 55. We're going to celebrate our 30 years. But that was a time in my life that I want to teach you and mentor you how to make it the best that you can. Share your experiences, tips, and advice in the comments below. We're all learning from each other. And remember, working mom, you've got this. Are you tired of the daily scramble to find your keys, purse, work projects, backpacks, homework, and permission slips? Reclaim your sanity with these exclusive tips for setting up a stress-free landing zone. These strategies are for busy working moms just like you to save time and restore peace to your home. Enter your email and you'll receive a one-page PDF with four easy steps on how to set up a landing zone to save time. Create a home you love.